After a long hiatus, we're back with another episode of WOW! Outside is Wonderful with Will. It might be a short one today, but hopefully we can all still learn something new. Today's theme is the lake. Yo, nice. <laughs> Are you okay? Thank you. Recently, I dropped my good friend Tyler off way up at the headwaters of the Mississippi River in Minnesota, where he's begun canoeing it from top to bottom. While I was there, I saw some interesting animals while we explored Lake Itasca. So here we go. I dropped it. First up are these beautiful damselflies. At first glance, you might think this is a dragonfly, and you'd be kind of right. They belong to the same subspecies of insect called Odonata, or as I think British people pronounce it, Odonata. Odonata. But damselflies are smaller than dragonflies, usually less than two inches in size and skinnier, looking more like a twig. Besides the size, an easy way to tell the difference between a damselfly and a dragonfly is how their wings rest when they're not in the air. Damselflies will have their wings tucked back like this, and dragonflies will have their wings straight out to the sides like this. You can find both damselflies and dragonflies near fresh water. Throughout the world, there are around 5,000 species of damselflies and dragonflies. This particular damselfly looks to me like a seepage dancer. They're known to live near seeping, slow-moving water, and being at the Mississippi headwaters, this would check out. This one could also be a familiar bluet. They have a nearly identical pattern to the seepage dancer and are found in this habitat too. Upon closer look at the video, I realized we saw another species of damselfly. This one has less stripes and a single blue band around the thorax. It's known as the azure bluet. Super duper beautiful. Like all other damselflies, they feed on small insects. Next up at the lake is a swarm of whirligig beetles. I had never seen them before, so their behavior was really surprising to me. They swim on the surface and swim around rapidly when alarmed. We're witnessing history. <laughs> They're thought to have a dual eye system that allows them vision both above and beneath the water surface. Whoa, I think they can go underwater. As my friend Justin discovered, they can swim under the water as well. Whirligig beetles have a constantly replenishing waxy exterior that helps them move through the water quickly and evade predators. They're known to be extremely difficult to hold on to. They range from 2 to 17 millimeters in length. Look out for them next time you're at a lake's edge or near slow moving water. Last up is a species of bird we saw perched on a buoy a few hundred feet offshore. From their orange legs, black and orange beaks, black patch behind the eye, and white and gray bodies, my team of scientists has concluded this is a group of foresters' tern. The single tern perched on the right is mature, while the three perched on the left are juveniles. Foresters' terns forage open water for fish, attacking with sharp dives into the water. You can find them in wetlands, fresh or salt water, across the entire continental United States and throughout Mexico. That's all for this episode of Wow, Outside is Wonderful with Will. I'll catch you guys outside in the next one. Special thanks to my team of scientists and field researchers. Before you go, can you guess what kind of fungus this is at the base of the tree? Find out next episode. Peace. Hello guys. Three on here. Bro.